Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going over the electrical system in the V156. I felt that the original setup was pretty basic and it was my goal to give it a proper update and more power. So stay tuned and see what I did in this entry of Project Glastron. Hello again and welcome back. Like I was saying previously, the original electrical system left a few things to be desired. In its original state, the electrical system only had a few components. Those components consisted of positive and negative cables running from the battery to the Evinrude motor. Then from up front, there was the Evinrude remote control box, which had a wire harness that ran to the back to the motor, and a tachometer lead wire that connected to the gauge in the dash. Last but not least, there was a three-way switch in the dash that controlled the anchor and running lights. However, to feed power to the switch, there were two alligator clamps that could be connected to the battery in the back in order to supply power when needed. So now that you know where the boat began, let me talk you through the improvements that I've made. Previously, I showed how I installed a JVC head unit and Rockford Fosgate speakers in the boat for an audio system. The next thing I wanted was to add a central connection point for all of my 12 volt accessories. That's when I purchased a Blue Sea Systems ST Blade ATO slash ATC fuse block. This is the 12-circuit model which comes with a cover and it features negative and positive posts to connect to a battery. I mounted this fuse block under the dash on the starboard side of the boat. Once I had the fuse block mounted, I continued by installing two 4-gauge marine grade wires. These wires run from the terminals on the fuse block through the gunnel on the starboard side and to the rear of the boat. They then connect to two 3 8 inch stainless steel junction posts mounted on the starboard flotation box. These junction posts are here to help me manage a lot of wire. Let me walk you through what's connected to them. From the Evan Rood, there's a negative and positive cable that runs to these posts. Then I ran a negative connection from the negative post to my deep cycle battery. And then from the positive post, I connected to a marine grade battery disconnect switch. This disconnect switch allows me to control the flow of electricity throughout the boat. For example, when not in use, I can disengage the battery to help prevent unwanted power consumption. Or when engaged, it will feed the power to the fuse block, motor, and remote control. So once the switch was in place, I then ran the positive cable from the switch to the battery. Now, from here, it was time to focus on wiring the components. This is when I rebuilt the Evan Rude remote control. Primarily, I took it apart to install a new key switch. This was mainly due to the old key switch not staying in when engaged. So I used the old key switch as a guide for the wire connections and I quickly got it changed out. I also used marine grade triple grease on the bearing and shifter dogs inside the remote. And while I was here, I then replaced the previously spliced wires for the tachometer and keyed battery accessory. I used heat shrink on these wires to keep them from getting hung up and to keep the setup nice and clean. I also hit the controller with a coat of white Rust-Oleum paint and when the paint dried, I then reassembled it all. With the control rebuilt, I installed it in the boat and focused on wiring under the dash for the display gauges. From the remote control, I ran two wires to the gauge cluster. One was a signal wire that connected to the tachometer to provide the RPM reading. The other wire is a battery wire going to the voltmeter, which is powered with the key switch. By being powered with the key switch, this wire gives me a reading of the battery only when the key switch is engaged. From the voltmeter, I ran a connection in series to the battery terminal of the tachometer. As I mentioned earlier, the tachometer also has a signal wire from the remote control. There's also a ground connection, and that I ran in series between the voltmeter, tachometer, and speedometer. The ground wire then runs back to the fuse block. Next, I made an illumination circuit which connects to all three dash gauges and then connects to the three-way switch in the dash. This three-way switch is new, but it is the same setup that the boat had originally. The switch is used to turn on two different lighting patterns. The first is for anchor lights, which turns on the plug and play navigation light at the rear of the boat, as well as the gauge lights. The running light pattern turns on the bow light, dash lights, and the plug and play navigation light at the rear of the boat. One other element that I added was two eight foot LED submersible light strips that are mounted in the gunnels of the boat. These are also set to turn on with either light pattern on the three-way switch. The illumination circuit then terminates its positive and negative connections at the fuse block. The last piece of the fuse block connections was the radio, which I'm not showing, but simply consists of a positive and a negative connection. With my setup, all accessories connected to the fuse block are getting power 
based on the battery disconnect switch at the back. If the switch is off, nothing will have power, not even the remote control. I also chose to go with a single battery system and not a dual battery system, also referred to as a starting and house battery system. I believe my boat and power needs are both small enough to get by with the one battery setup. But should I run into any issues in the future, I may add a second battery. Again, here's an overview diagram of the electrical system in my boat. Please excuse the crudity of this model, but it does show all of the connections that I talked about. With that being said, I think this is a good place to end this video. If you have any questions, please shoot me a comment on the video and I will do my best to answer. Also, keep in mind, this is just how I wanted my boat electrical system designed. I based it off the original and then just kind of updated it to the best that I knew how. And again, I'm sure there are lots of other configurations and ways to go about it, but this is just what I chose to go with. As always, I want to say just how much I appreciate you watching my video. Please feel free to subscribe so that I can see you next time.